Fish on. Woo! I got one. He smashed that shad tube. That is awesome. Nice fish. Feels really heavy. We'll see. We're in pretty heavy wind here. He's staying down. He's fighting hard. He's trying to jump. Still 125 feet behind the boat. And they want to jump. Just keep that low rod angle and try to keep them under the water. That that pushing to that water will help. You know, not throw the hook if possible. Okay, I'm trying to keep him down. Keep him from jumping. Killed the motor. We were having a hard time in that wind. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Let me show you this fish. Man, I fought that fish for a long time in that wind. It was difficult. It's all tangled up. Look at that beautiful trout. Man, that is awesome. It is not an easy bite out here this morning. That is a really nice, nice and clean Shasta Lake rainbow. We've had some problems with copepods. This one has a little mark there. But uh, like I said, it hasn't been easy this morning. We've been marking a ton of fish. We've got a couple bass, we've got a couple trout, and um, we got one trout with copepods that I didn't want to film. We got this beauty here. But we've been working the marks, and uh, we pop him off the hook here. He really wanted that shad tube. I'm running one of my rainbow colored shad tubes behind the uh, watermelon diamond back. We were going about 1.4 when that fish hit. And he got that hook. Wait. Fishhuntshoot.com offers a variety of tackle as well as rods and reels designed to get you on more and bigger fish. Check it out today at fishhuntshoot.com. Howdy folks, I'm Kel Kellogg and today we are going to talk about fishing tubes for landlocked salmon and trout. Now here's a rigged tube, this is one of my shad tubes, it's rigged with a number 6 red treble hook and I've got it running behind a watermelon diamondback dodger. But let's talk a little bit about tubes before I show you how to rig one of these things up. Now we all know about hoochies, we've talked about them a lot on the channel here. They're highly effective, they come in a ton of colors. They're very cost effective. They're this, just a deadly, awesome lure. Um, you run them behind dodgers and you catch a lot of fish on them. I see a lot of guys using hoochies, but I don't see a lot of guys using tubes. And one of the reasons is they think they're hard to rig and, you know, tubes really aren't on the radar of a lot of anglers, but they should be. I'll show you a radical glow tube here. Here's a kokanee tube. You know, these things are all kind of the... Uh, the spawn of the fat gets it, the bass tube. First, bass anglers started using you know the three to five inch gets it. Then your panfish guys started using smaller tubes like these. Well, then kokanee guys, trout guys, the innovative guys started playing with those baits, and they started to get a little bit of a following in the in the kokanee and trout market. But again, not nearly as popular as hoochies. But uh, you should be using these because they're bulkier. They're a bulkier bait, and in a lot of cases, they're a tougher bait. They have a unique action, and uh, you can just catch a lot of fish on them. Small, bright colored tubes like these, you can catch a lot of kokanee on. Larger, a little bit bulkier tubes, you can catch a lot of uh, landlocked kings on, a lot of trout on them, stuff like that. So let me let me show you one of these shad tubes. This is a, actually this is my favorite color. This is one I call rainbow trout, man. It's got that, uh, kind of iridescent green back. It's got the orange belly. And you can see it's very bulky through the belly. It has a very shad-like profile. And uh, it's very impressionistic of what the fish are feeding on at places like Shasta, Don Pedro, Folsom, stuff like that. So anyway, I just love these things. But let me show you how I rig them up. It's pretty simple. You know, you'll see guys rigging these different ways with double hooks and a, a treble hook and a single hook. And, and that's all fun and games and that all works. Um, a lot of guys complain that they have a hard time figuring out how to put the leader through them. Well, let me break it down for you. I use a very simple method. It all starts with some 10 pound fluorocarbon leader material. Don't like to go, you know, much heavier than 12. I don't like to go lighter than 10 because it's invisible to the fish. That stiffness transfers maximum action from the dodger to the tube. Tubes have very little action on their own, so you're going to need to run it behind a dodger, and you want maximum action transfer to the bait. So use that stiffer line. In this case, I've got some vanished 10-pound fluorocarbon. Kind of got a 
oh, a couple three feet strung off here. You leave it on the spool when you're starting starting to rig. Um, what I'm going to rig this with is a number six red treble hook. I'm going to get the line through the tube first, then I'm going to add a couple five millimeter glow beads and that's going to give the bait a little bit of glow they're going to be inside the belly but they're also going to protect the bait from getting torn up by the leader material going out through the head of the tube they just make them a little bit tougher so i like to use two beads the beads are optional but i always use them so you set the bead down take your hook now got to remember i'm old feeble and blind so if i can do this anybody can do this but it might take me a couple tries so here's your tube now I'd usually be on my boat, I'd be wearing my reading glasses, but that is, no one wants to see that. So anyway, take your hook, line it up on the nose of that bait, shove it through there, and then I pop it in and out a couple times. I let that barb open that hole up just a, just a wee bit like so. I don't want a big ripped hole in it, but I, you know, I want a decent hole in it. So done with that, I'll set that down for now. Take your line, take your leader material, Get it short, and as I said, you know, it's pretty stiff. It's 10 pound test, and just poke it in there where, where that hole is. So there we go, I got that. See, old blind guys, we can, get it, we can get it done. So let me just feed this through here. So it's coming out the back right there, just like that. So now I've got a tube impaled on my line. So pull the tube down here, kind of out of my way, and grab a, a bead. Here's bead number one going on the line. Let that slide down to the bait. Here comes bead number number two. There's a stump down here I'm working on. Those beads were running all over there trying to escape, but I got this one. So there we go. Got both my glow beads on there. Got my tube on there. Final step, put the hook on. So I'll slide this down out of the way. I'm gonna use a Pelomar knot, so give myself a lot of line to work with. I just double the line over like that. Take my hook, like so, put that doubled line right through the eye of that hook, and uh, you know, I'm not keeping it real short, just so it's easier to tie. I tie an overhand knot in there, of course I don't draw it down, I grab that end of it, drop that hook through there, and then I just kind of start to draw things down, take my time, draw that knot down, just like so. It's coming along. There we go. Good and good. Didn't hook myself in the finger. That's always a plus. Grab my scissors. I'm going to trim that tag off. But I'm not going to trim it off super short. I'm going to leave about, I don't know, about a sixteenth of an inch, I guess. Now, next next step in the, in the process is I'm going to squeeze those beads inside that tube. So there goes bead number one. Oops. Takes a second. There we go. Okay, bead number one's in there. We get bead number two down here in position. I've been rigging tubes like this for years, and I really like these glow beads inside. I think it just adds to the presentation. I think it adds a little bit of glow to the bait. So there we go. Both those beads are in there. And that bead up inside the head there, it just kind of, it protects the tip of the tube from that leader when you've got a fish on there. So get some more life out of your tube that way. You get a little bit of glow in the tube. I think it's just cool. Last thing to do is slide the leader up like this. Bring that hook up into the skirt. Make sure you got everything kind of how you how you like it. It doesn't really matter. The fish don't care, but I do. I like it to look good. If it looks good and you have confidence in your bait, you're gonna fish it better. So there we go. Rigged and ready. Okay, so that's on the hook. The glow beads are inside. Got that shaddy profile. We got that awesome color. Now, as I said, we're gonna run it behind a dodger. If you're going to use a six inch dodger or a four inch dodger, doesn't matter. You want this bait two dodger lengths back. If you're using a six inch dodger, you know, you want it back a foot. If you're using a four inch dodger, eight or nine inches. And all you need to do, figure out how long you want your leader. Whoop, I want my spool of leader material. Figure out how long you want your leader. 
find that point, double your line over right there, like that, do a double overhand knot, do a double overhand loop. So there's one time through, just like that. I told you I was old and blind, but I can still fish. There's that. There we go. I'm going to draw that down, just like that. You don't have to have a super tiny loop there. And we'll trim that off the spool like this. Don't act like you've never cut off the right side because I know you have because I do it all the time. I get to start over. <laughs> but anyways, there you go. Run that behind a Diamondback Dodger or a Sling Blade Seps Dodger, whatever you got, whatever you got confidence in. Put that just below the level of the Kings or the Trout or whatever you're fishing for. Lube it up with a little bit of Procure, whatever your favorite scent is. This is a Shad tube, so I'd put some Threadfin Shad on there. And get ready to yell fish on because it is absolutely deadly. It gives the impression of a, of a large fish feeding. That's the Dodger. They come in expecting to see a little tiny baby Shad. And guess what? There's a little tiny baby Shad. Wham! Anyways, I love these shad tubes. Hey, if you want to check them out, I got these things in my store. They're unique. I looked for a tube like this for a long time. I finally found some. Um, I put together a little kit. So anyway, go up on the store. I'll have Wes put a link here somewhere. And uh, that's all I got to say. This is Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off. If you're not using tubes, you should be. They're dynamite. They're deadly. I'll see you next time right here on YouTube. Please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for all the support, guys. And uh, hopefully I'll see you out on the water. Anyway, guys, have a wonderful day.